Welcome back to Thinking with Objects lecture number three subclasses. So before the break we created a class called doorway. This doorway we could create uh, doorways from uh, <coughs> the object doorway and we could tell tell a person to go through it. So then we went from one room to the next room because it had two rooms uh, it was connected uh, to. And the doorway was the connection between the two rooms. Then we might want to have a door as well, so we created what's called a subclass called the door, which will have all the information that we have in doorway, but we also added extra information like how to open it, how to close it, check if it's opened, we can approach it to get options to open and close it, and if we want to go through it, well, if it's closed then we're going to fail. If it's open then we're going to do it exactly the same way as the doorway. So right, we also have this problem we wanted to have a lo lockable door right so how do we do this well we can just extend a door further to have a locked version of the door so now we if we implement it like this we have a doorway which we can just go through we have a door which we can just open and then go through and then we have a locked door which we can unlock uh, we can lock and check if it's locked or not so there, there's no problem in making subclasses to subclasses, and then we can have subclasses to subclasses to subclasses to subclasses if we wanted to, uh, which actually comes in handy. It's not uh, something ridiculous to do. So let's get going and see if we can get that locked uh, door class to work. Right. So what we want to do first of all is obviously create a new file here and do public class locked door. And what's this supposed to do? Well, it's supposed to extend door. Oops, extends door. Because, well, if we do it like that, then we get all the functionalities from the door class, which in its turn gets all its functionalities from the doorway class. So, all of a sudden, we have a locked door, which is, first of all, a locked door, obviously, but it's also a door, and it's also a doorway. So, uh, so we can use it as any of those three things. So we want to have a uh, boolean value to determine if it's locked or not. And of course a constructor where we can get the uh, rooms. Room uh, 1 and room 2 like so. And what do we do with them? Well, we're just going to call it like this. So room one and room two like so. So that's a super call if I spelled that correctly. So super and then we give it a parameters. And what this is going to do uh, is not calling the doorway because the doorway is not the super class of locked door. Uh, locked doors super class is door and doors super class is doorway. So like locked doors super super class uh, if that's a word would, would be doorway. So when we do the super call here we uh, call this constructor here, which will will of course call the the constructor of the doorway. So we always need to call the constructors of well one constructor of the uh, superclass. But since that's the case for for any class, it will just call them in in a chain un until it finds the to topmost superclass. All right. So that's the thing we want to do there. But we also want to set locked to be true by default, right? It's it's just a, a prefer preference there. So I, I would like to to start with a door to be locked. A locked door should start as locked, but if you want to, you can unlock it. Protected boolean is locked. Uh, uppercase L, please. Return locked. So we return if it's locked or not, and then we can use it. We can also lock it. How do we lock lock a door? Well, it's very easy. So as you can see, I'm doing kind of what what I did with the open one, but it's it's about locking the door instead. Protected um, void unlock, and then un not unlocked. I'm doing the same mistake. Locked equals false. There you go. So now we have those like very simple methods here. But um, but yeah, we we want to do more things, right? So for instance, we might want to print out if this door is locked. You know, with with, with the normal door, we um, made sure to tell tell the user if it was opened or closed, like this. 
depending on if it was opened or closed. So let's override that one. So public string get label room and room. Okay, there you go. And just to make sure that we're doing things properly, let's add the override tag there so no errors will be done. So we make sure that we're actually overriding here. If is locked, so if everything is locked, then we want to return is basically room dot get name. So that's the name of the room, and then that it's locked, like so. Makes sense. So we have the uh, name here, and then we add add it like so. Um, but if that's not the case, if it's not locked, then we want to uh, return well the the label of the other one there. Um, so we return the uh, well the get label uh, from uh, from the door here, which will use the get label from the doorway to print that out properly. Um, so just a simple thing here: we print out locked if it's locked, otherwise we print it out normally. Right, so now it's a locked door, but it's not really locked. We don't do anything, we just tell it that it's locked. So let's make sure that it actually is locked. Protected uh, void open. Right. So I'm going to override this. So I'm telling it that it's going to override it. But remember, these tags are not to override. It's to make sure that we don't mess up while we're overriding. So we can override without the tags there. Um, and then we do if. Uh, it's locked, but we don't want that, so if it's not locked, then we want it to open. So in the in the do normal door, you can just open it and close it whenever, right? Open and close, right, like that. But if it's, if we can lock the door, we don't want you to be able to open it if, it, if it's locked. And the same thing goes with closed, if you like opened, opened uh, it in its open state, uh, well, Left it in the open state and then then locked it. Then you're not you can't like close the door unless you actually unlock it, which is totally possible. It's a, it's a bit weird to do to lock it when it's open, but but yeah, super dot uh, close. So uh, now we can open and close it just if uh, if it's unlocked. So otherwise we can't do it. So now if I hit compile and uh, create the uh, well, I'll add the locked door here instead and run it. There you go. Now if I try to open the uh, bathroom door, uh, it's totally fine. I can do that. If I try to go outside, with there's a locked door there, so it's actually telling me it's locked, because it is. Uh, and then I can open the door, but then nothing happened. Why didn't anything happen? Well, if you get the option to open the door and you don't open it, then you will obviously not be able to go through it, right? And we still got the option to open the door, but when we try to open it, using the open command here, it basically said, well, the door is locked, I'm not going to do anything. And therefore the door wasn't open even though we asked it to open, and therefore we didn't get out. So we're stuck in this apartment or house or whatnot. So what we want to do, of course, is to allow the user to op uh, well unlock the door and lock, lock the door and things like that. And w how do we do that? Well, it's quite straightforward. So public void approach door. And then we have person and the uh, scanner. So this is the uh, method that we was using in door. And now we can just do override, like so. Just to make sure that we're not spelling things wrong or adding the wrong parameters or that the method in the superclass has been changed or whatnot. Right, so if the door is... Uh, is locked, then we should get the option to unlock it, right? I, I think that's a good idea. So, do you want to unlock this door? Yes, no. Like that. 
Okay, and then I do the same thing again if scanner dot next dot to lowercase uh, dot equals yes. So as you can see here, I'm using the same code over and over again to check if if you answer answer yes. So it would just be much better to add a method uh, that is like uh, taking a question like this and a scanner and then it returns a boolean value if you answered yes or not. Uh, and then we can just do if answered question and then give it a question and then we do things. But well, yeah, that's would, would that would be better and that's room for improvement. Uh, improvement of, of this uh, this code. But at the moment I'm just doing this all the time. So if you wanted to unlock the door then we can just do unlock. Else. But we don't want you to be able to lock it just because it's not locked. We only want you to lock it um, if it's not open, right? Because if our door is open of course we can lock it because like we prevent it from being closed if it's locked and everything but it wouldn't make sense to give you the user the option to do so in the approach door. like approach the door it's open do you want to lock it to to annoy people um, so therefore it's going to check well if it's not locked that means it's unlocked but also make sure that it's not open and if that's the case then I want to do the same thing as I did here but I want to uh, ask you if you want to lock the door and if so lock the door like that Okay, fine. What happens now? Well, after that, so as you can see, this looks pretty much the same as the approach door we had in door. In door, we had like, uh, where is it? Here. We had, if it's open, do you want to close it? Otherwise, do you want to open it? And then if it's open, then we want to ask if you want to go through it. And that's pretty much what we want to do here as well. So, if it's not locked, what do we want to do then? So, either the player unlocked it or it um, ignored locking it and what we don't want to do is the following we want to oops we want to approach the door like that person door the or the person there in comma and then um, scanner so what we do here is tell the door, well, you can run your specific approach door code. So there we will check if it's open, then we're going to ask if you want to close it, do you want to open this door, um, do you want to go through the open doorway, blah, blah, blah. And in the end, when we've done that, we might as well ask the user, um, well, now when this has happened, do you, do you want to, well, we don't need that actually, do you want to lock the door afterwards? So it might be like, well, we went through the door and I closed the door behind me and then I want to, to lock it. But to make sure, we also actually need to check that it's not open. Because it's, if it's open, we don't want to allow you to lock it. The same thing that we just did. Uh, do you want to lock this door afterwards? And if so, uh, we want to lock it. So what we're doing now... Uh, hmm? Um is something wrong. Oh right, one parenthesis is too much. Um, and I also need to import uh, scanner. So even though I import the scanner in the in the superclass here, that doesn't that's not enough. I need to import it here as well so I know what it is. Like that. Okay. So what we do now is when we approach the door to a with a locked door, well we approach a locked door, then what we'll have to do is first allow the user to lock or unlock the door and if it's not locked after that then we can approach it normally uh, as it if it would be a door we, we would we'll check if it's open or closed and then we will uh, then we will allow the user to open or close it and then if it's open we allow the user to go through and if it went through we can close it behind us and when that all of that code is done we will go back to the locked door and ask the user do you want to lock the door afterwards but you will only get that option if the door is closed. Right, so now we've added locked door here. So what do we have to do to make it work properly in the, in the room example? Because we added this part so it should handle, it would handle doors and uh, we have this part for everything else. Well, that's a trick qu question. We don't have to do anything at all. We check if a selected doorway if one specific doorway is also an instance of a door 
it's a door. Since locked door is a door, it's a door because it extends door like that. Since that's the case, all the locked doors will also give us a true here. So we will run this code for all the different kinds of doors. Doors that we just create as doors, like the bathroom door, like that, or other doors, more advanced doors, like the locked door to get outside. So this code will be run for both of them. And since since locked door is as well a door, we can still do this. We can tell, well, this doorway, convert it and get the door version of it. So we get selected door here. And we don't need to like tell it like, oh right, if you're a locked door, convert it to a locked door and tell it to approach the door, blah, blah, blah. And the reason why we don't have to do that is because any door can, well, we can approach any door. But in the locked door version, we're overriding the approach door. So this code here will run instead. But then when this code runs, we will also run the code in the uh, normal door code if if some, some conditions are met, so if the door is not locked. So we don't have to do a single thing in the room example here. We can use it anyways. Well, the only thing I do is to use lock door there, but I had already uh, added that. So I compile that, run it. I can use the bathroom uh, like like before. Not, no, no problem there. Or I can go outside. I can do like, uh, right, I want to unlock this door. Yes, please. Do you want to open this door? No. Do you want to lock it afterwards? Yes, sure. I guess unlock to check uh, check something. I don't know what. Like if my key matched. Or I don't know. It's all silly. So let's go outside. Uh, I need to get to work. Uh, do you want to unlock the door? Yes. Do you want to open this door? Uh, do you want to go through? Yes. Do you want to close the door? Yes. Do you want to lock this door afterwards? So there you go. Now I'm outside. I'm off to work. And... Um, well, I locked the door behind me, so it's locked, and now maybe it's afternoon, it's evening or whatnot, and I come back. Uh, me and some friends will eat some dinner, so they come just uh, behind me. So I'm going to open up the hallway, well, the door to the hallway. So yes, I want to unlock it. Yes, I want to open it. Yes, I want to go through it. And no, I don't want to close it in uh, my friends' faces. So there you go, now we have the... Oh right, I left the bathroom door open. Uh, so the bathroom door is opened, and the outside, uh, the door to the outside is also opened, uh, and it's not telling me that it's locked because, well, it's l unlocked, like that. And now my friends can come in, and we can head to the kitchen or something like that. Uh, exit. There you go. Right. So that was quite useful, wasn't it? So we uh, extended it further, and and. Uh, we now have a doorway, we can go through normally, we have door, we can open up and go through, and we have a locked door, which is a door we can also lock, and when it's unlocked we can use it as a normal door, we're just opening it, and when it's open we can use it as a normal doorway and go through. So this is quite linear, right? We have a, a doorway, and then we have a, a door, which is a more advanced version of the doorway, and then we have an even more advanced version of the door, which is a locked door. But we don't have to make things linear. That That's... that's ridiculous if we would have. So here, here we have the have the doorway, which we can create a doorway from. Uh, we have the door class, which we can create a door object from. And finally we have the locked door like so. So completely linear. We just have first first the doorway, the door and the locked door. But well we could we could add a breakable door. A breakable door is not a more more advanced locked version. It has a very fragile door which just some planks that would break very easily, which could be opened and closed like the door, but we would also make so it breaks down after a while. If you like <laughs> uh, open it too frequently, then it's going to break because it it's very fragile. Uh, then we might have a blocked doorway. I don't know. It it might be an elevator that is out of out of uh, service, out of order, or it might be like a we had a doorway there before, but we wanted to move things around, so we like. Uh, Make sure, made sure that we blocked it completely, put a bookshelf uh, in the way or whatnot, so we can't go through there, but you still need, know that there's a door, have, have been a doorway there, so there's some, some sort of connection between the rooms there. Uh, or maybe we want a code lock, uh, a door with a code uh, lock there. That's a more advanced version of the locked door, so that would have paths from the doorway. We can go through it when it's open and everything, We uh, and that's the door part, so when it's open we can actually go through, and then we have a locked uh, the lock door thingy that, well, we can lock it, but then we have some specific code for the, the code door, which allows us 
to, well, instead of just, do you want to unlock the door, yes. It would say, do you want to uh, unlock the door, if so, type type the correct uh, code to open it, and every type the correct code is going to unlock, and then you can open it and use it as a normal door. Or we could have like a very annoying door. You know, these heavy old doors that they are so thick and they they're like the friction to the to the door frame is so so um, high that you can't budge them, you can't really open them. So we could have like that. That 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 would be another version of a door. But well, what would that be? What's what's special? Uh, what 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 would be the special thing with that? Well, maybe the user would have to try a few times. Like, all right, you try it once, you fail. You try it once, you fail. You you uh, get your maid from the kitchen, and he tries to help you. You like budge it together, and then you try to then you manage to open it. I don't know, like to the to the food food seller or whatnot. But th this gets a bit messy. But th it's not messy because we have a lot of subclasses. It's just because well they are all over the place. So we can just organize them here. So now we can see very easily a nice class structure here we have uh, a uh, we have a doorway and the doorway uh, we can either make a blocked doorway out of it or we can make a, a door out of it so so either we just have the basic doorway and nothing else or we can extend it um, and create a more specific thing like a blocked doorway or the door but if we have a door we can go with just a standard door if we want to but if we want to we can make, make a breakable door a locked door or annoying door uh, which is the heavy one, which you can't really budge. Um, maybe I should have called it heavy door, but yeah. And and if you have a locked door, uh, you can just go with a locked door if you want to. But if you want to, you can go all the way to the next step, which is uh, the code locked door. And of course, you can ex just expand this. So as you can see, it's not linear anymore. We just expand it in, in different branches here. But what about the doorway? Does that 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 one has subclasses? But does it have a does it has a superclass? The door superclass is a doorway. But what about doorway? What happens to doorway? And well, we don't do extend or anything with the doorway. We just do public uh, class doorway, and then that's fine. But every class that we make actually has a superclass, and the superclass of all classes, the like top very top class is the uh, uh, is the object the object class and basically what that is is just the super class of everything and if we don't define what we're extending then it assumes that we're extending that one so we don't have to type that all the time it would just get a bit annoying we would, wouldn't really see if this is our own class or if it's extending something else entirely so if we don't extend anything it's actually extending the object which contains things that is actually used to just work with an o with the objects in themselves. We usually we don't really have to care about it, but but it's important to note that well the doorways is not a top uh, top top class. The t t very top most class is the the object, and we can take a quick look on that like like this. So if I uh, reset the interactions here. So I could use object here as as my variable type. So my variable, uh, come on, variable equals like two. That would be totally fine, because well, the object is the super super class of all the classes. Uh, we can do like cake. Oh, well, let's not do it like that. We we do my variable equals cake. So all of a sudden I'm storing cake there where I just had a two. And now I can do my variable equals new room uh, my secret hideout. Oh, that I can do my variable equals uh, new door between my my variable and my variable. So we know that in my variable we're currently storing. Um, my secret room, and for some reason I want a door between. Yeah, I just want a door that I can go between the secret hideout and the secret hideout, so the same room. That doesn't really make sense. I have like a just a loose door ha hanging there from the ceiling or whatnot. <laughs> I don't know, but worth noting is we shouldn't really use this object my variable equals two equals cake if we don't need to, because here we will get the problem. 
No constructor in door matches this in invocation. Arguments, object, object. Expected return type, object. Candidate signatures, door, room, room. So what does this mean? Well, we gave it two objects. There's no way of creating a new door, if we go, go into the door here, with, with two objects. Like this. We, th there's no constructor for two objects. We have a constructor for two rooms, that's totally fine. Um, so we could do it like that, give it two room, but but it is a room, right? Yeah, it is a room, but it's in an object type, a variable, well, a variable with the object type, so it, the only thing it knows about is that this is an object. We have stored an object. Of course it is a room, so we could tell it, well, this is a room, silly. Like this. And then it would work. Now we created a door there, uh, using... Uh, uh, well, y using using a new door, and then we cast those two rooms. But well, now we have to cast them to every uh, well room every time we use them and things like that. So yes, object is the superclass to everything, and yes, we can make variables with the object type. But don't use the object like that just because you want to be able to store everything. Because first of all, it's it's getting tricky to know what we have this variable for. Like object my variable. That's so. Well, we don't know. It's a like the name is terrible. My variable. What does it do? The uh, the uh, variable type is also terrible because we can store whatever we want in it. Um, so so it's nice in its way, but that we can store whatever we want. But when we read it, we have to tell it what we're reading because otherwise it's like, oh right, I want to create a door, but it doesn't really work because you know you can't create a door with two objects. So yeah, so that's the object for you. It's a superclass of exactly every single class. Well, apart from itself, it's not its own superclass. Right. So at the uh, at the image with all the different doors that I showed, uh, with the, some examples of of different doors, I had like this blocked uh, blocked uh, doorway. That doesn't really seem that useful, right? And it's quite simple to do. It just tells you well when you want to go through it, then well you can't go through. Okay quite simple in uh, in other words and maybe we actually have a, like an elevator that we have blocked completely it's it's like an elevator it's not out of order we just well well it's out of order we um, nobody cares to repair it it's like too expensive to repair so uh, uh it's just there but we blocked it we like put a bookshelf in front of it we have like a yeah cupboard or whatnot i don't know so what we could do we could of course create a blocked doorway uh, class, but if we only want his two criteria, or well, two reasons why we would would do what I'm going to show you now, the reason would be we want, just want this class to be used for one single instance. We just want to create one object from it. So, for instance, uh, I'm creating four doorways here, but I'm just creating one door. Well, actually, I'm creating two doors, and I'm but I'm just creating one locked door. But the lock door is quite useful. We can use it uh, in other scenarios later on if we want to, like, have lo a lock door to our office or whatnot. But uh, if we just want to use it once, and it's quite simple, so the lock door is not too simple. We have a lot. We have a lot of codes. We have 75 lines uh, of code. So if, if it, we only want to use it once and it's quite simple, then we can use something called an anonymous class. And an anonymous class is a class without a name. So if I want to create a blocked doorway using an anonymous class, so it's not called blocked doorway, that's what, yes, what I uh, well refer to it as, uh, between the hallway and the elevator, I would do it like this. So I would create a doorway. So that's the uh, superclass I want. I want this to be the superclass of, um, of my blocked doorway, which we saw in the image. So then I would just do hallway elevator. Right? That's that's how I create a, a doorway between it, those two. But what I can do, instead of putting my sem semicolon here right away, I could do some curvy brackets here, like this. And what I'm doing now is creating an anonymous class. And the anonymous class is basically that, well, I can create a... I can modify the doorway a bit. I can extend it and change some things. And what I want to change are just two different methods. I want to override the public void go through with a, uh, a person and here I want to instead of allowing you to go through or anything I want you just want to print out you can't 
get through here. Something like that. So that's the first thing. That means that I'm not going to run the normal doorway code for go through, which is that one. So it gets the opposite room and tries to go there. So, But instead, I'm going to run this code. So I'm creating an anonymous class where I'm changing some methods in here. And then I can do another thing here that I want to override. Public uh, string get label override room like this. And what I do is simply return uh, super dot uh, uh, get label room and finally we are like out of order or something like that. So now we would change those two things but it might be good to spell it properly like that. So, so we create an anonymous class. We don't call it blocked uh, block doorway or anything. We just create a new doorway here, but instead of just doing so, we edit it a bit. So we create a new version of the doorway class, but we don't save that new class anywhere. We just use it here once where we change these two things. So like I said, if it's quite simple, then it's fine. So we just change two methods like this. Very short, very simple. <coughs> and if we only want to do use it once. So of course we could use make a normal class for this. It, it would be totally fine, but but maybe we want it to be like uh, more obvious what we're doing here instead of just having a very tiny class somewhere else. So, so it's just a way of 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 implementing simple classes uh, a bit differently. So now we run it. We have the elevator down there, which is out of order, and we can't access it. Uh, there you go. You can't get through here when I try to go there. So that's an anonymous class. Uh, I just wanted to mention them as well. Right, so a few more things to, to go through here actually and uh, one of them is the following. So if I, we go into the locked door here and we, we define how we want to open, how we want to close um, and things like that. But what if we uh, define how we want to detect if this is open or not? is open. So this is going to be over overridden as well. But what I'm going to do is be v be very stupid. I'm just going to say, well, this door is never open. That doesn't really make sense, right? It would make more sense if I, if I just uh, prevented you from, from opening it, like uh, protect the void open and then I wouldn't do anything. That would make much more sense, so you can't open this door. But what I'm doing now is you can still open it, but it's never opened. So so it's very weird. But, you know, c coders can do weird things, as can users. Um, so now if I try to open the outside door, which is a locked door, then I want to unlock that, and then I want to open this door, but I'm not allowed to go through, because it never opened. It's Well, it, I told it to open, but it and it did, but it, it's still defined as never open. So, so as you can see, the outside door is closed. Right. So what if I make a class um, with some very important things in them? Um, a very important method I don't want you to be able to change. In this case, it's not really that important that uh, if the user changes is open. It's just weird now because we change it in a very stupid way. We can do that for anything. We can just return nothing in, in the get label part. We can just do that we can't approach the door at all. Uh, so we can still do stupid things. Uh, but if we have something very important that we don't want you to be able to change, and l let's say that we don't want you to be able to change how we define is open, which actually makes sense. You're allowed to change how we can open it or close it, but well, it would make, make actually make sense to prevent you from changing it uh, how we use this variable here. And what we just do is type final there. So now we have protected final, boolean is open, and if I compile it now, it's going to complain here, you know, my my very stupid uh, override there. It's going to complain, well, um, we can't override this because that method is final. And if it's final, we don't have any th say into what we can do. So we can't change it. It's impossible to, to override it. So we'll just have to step back and ignore that because it's final. 
Right, um, but we can use final in a few different uh, cases. So we can use it, that was for methods, but we can use it for, for like, uh, fields as well. So if I make these rooms final here, then that means that I can change them once, only once, and only in the constructor or as a default value here. If I do that, then I can't change the value here because I already set it to null. That's the only value I want. But I can set it up here if I want to, but then I can't set it in the constructor. Like that. Now it's working. But I can't set set it down here. So I can't set like room 1 equals null. I can't do that because I'm already setting it up here. But even if I do it like that, I can't do it because it's in a method that I can call multiple times. So if I want like a constant value or something that I, well, you, we just set once and then we will need to make sure that nothing changes, uh, then we can just declare it as final. And finally, uh, um, we can put final up here. So in the class, we can have a, a final class, which wouldn't make sense at all now because what we we're preventing is for any class to actually extend that class. So if we tell, tell the user, well, you can't extend the doorway, we can't have anything. Uh, that extends the doorway class, well, then we can't use our door and not our locked door. So something like that wouldn't make sense to have in this scenario, but in some cases you might want to prevent users from uh, uh, extending, extending your class. So that's the final um, keyword there, which might come in handy. Um, it's not used uh, that often, but uh, if you want to prevent prevent the, uh, other coders or even yourself to reach things in a weird way, weird way uh, you might uh, <coughs> sorry you might want to prevent the user from doing something weird like like removing some code like overriding it and so on so it's handy in a few cases so right last lecture I promise you to show one thing that I haven't showed yet the difference between the default scope and the protected scope and to show that properly I want to um, put these things uh, these classes into different packages and I don't need this room example anymore I'm not going to use it so I'm going to close it so we have the door the doorway and the locked door and I want to put these in in their resp uh, respective packages so what I'm going to do is put the locked door in package doors that would make sense right it's a door and I want to save it as you need you know you need to store it in its proper folder so I need to store it in doors like that come on Nice. Save. And then what I want to do is to put the doorway in um, package doors indoors. So so that's we have that indoors, a so normal doorway. So I want to put it there instead. So now if I uh, save this here, doors and indoors, so I save it here. And then I finally do door. Uh, and do package, and that's indoors, indoors, right? And I need to save that. Nice. Uh, doors, indoors. So now they are located where they're supposed to, but that's not enough, is it? No, of course not. We need to import the different things. So first of all, we need to import the room and the uh, and the person, but I've already pre prepared those, so they are located in extras, and I just want to import everything from extras. And then I also want to import the locked door, so I just do import doors dot uh, uh, locked door like this. So I import these two things here together with scanner, and I want to do the same thing in the doorway. Also, uh, that I don't have to import uh, both of these. Uh, well, I don't have to import door and doorway and the opposite because they are in the same package. And finally, I want to import the extras here, but also all the indoors doors there. So now I'm just importing everything. So here we go, I can compile it once again because they are all referring to everything and can find everything that I need to, to get. But now we, we might want to take a further look on something. Here we go. So here I have a uh, protected final boolean is open right there. So what does that do? Well, that returns if it's open or not. And I've used protected, so I can't use it in different uh, packages. So I can't use it in, for instance, the uh, 
the the room the room can't ask a door if it's open a the um, the actual program, the room example, can't ask this door if it's open, but the doorway could ask you if this is open. This is the same package. But hang on a sec. It managed to compile, and if you if you remember, in the locked door, which is in a different package, that's indoors, while this is in indoors, which happens to be in the. <laughs> in the doors, yeah, indoors all over the place, which happens to be in this package here. Uh, but that actually makes them uh, in into different packages. But it still works, right? Look at this. It's open. I'm using it's open. So why is that working? So let's try something else. What if we remove protected and hit compile? <laughs> No, it doesn't work. So, so, so apparently, protected and default does a difference, and the difference is that, well, protected allows us to reach, reach it from within the same package, as well as from all our subclasses. So, since locked door, even though it's in a different package, it's indoors rather than indoors, then we can still refer to is open because it extends door if the is open is defined as protected. So we have private, we can only refer to that in the own own class, and then we have default, we can refer to uh, to another package as well, and then we have protected, we can refer it to the same from the same package, or in the uh, uh, from a subclass, and then we have public where we can reach it from anywhere. So there we go. That's pretty much what I'm going to talk about this lecture. So let's see what we have been speaking about. So first of all, we just had a simple class, the doorway class. You would be able to go through it and create a new doorway. So nothing new there. But then the new thing started. We made subclass. We made a subclass called door, and we added some extra things there called open, close, and is open, which allowed us to use the door. Well, we could create a door, and we could use it like a doorway. We could go through, but we also changed a few things. We changed so you wouldn't be able to go through it if it was closed, and we also uh, could open and close it. We could approach the door. It would ask, "Do you want to open?" and so on and so forth. But that wasn't enough. We wanted a lockable door. Um, uh, sorry, here's the code. So that's just a public class door extends the doorway, and then we have a superclass uh, construction constructor called there. Um, but what I was talking about, hey, that was enough. We want a lock, lock door as well. So then we extend the door like that. So we get unlock and lock and is locked there. So we just add more and more things like so. And then we can create, of course, a lock door as well, even though there's no image of it. But of course, we can create a lot of different subclasses. We can have subclasses to subclasses, and it can just branch out. So instead of just having what we just have, we also have a blocked doorway, which is a type of a doorway. We have a breakable door or an annoying door, which is a type of a door. And we also have a code door, like a code locked door, which is a type of a locked door. And then we can also uh, remember that the doorway itself is actually a subclass to the object class. So if we don't define a superclass, like we, if we don't do extends, blah, 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 then it's going to uh, ex uh, use extends uh, object. And the object is the uh, superclass of all classes in Java, which is a very, it's a core core class. It contains some core, core, um, core things that we need to have when we work with, with classes. Then we had the different scopes. So we have private default, and you don't type default. That's why it's in parentheses. Protected and public. So if it's the same class, we can access them no matter which uh, scope we have. If it's in the same package, we can access it as long as it's not private. If it's not in the same package, but it is a subclass, then we can just access it if it's protected or public. Or if it's we're not a subclass, but we're not in the same package either, then we can only access it if it's public. And then we had these anonymous classes, so we could create a new doorway like, like that, but this is the blocked doorway example. Um, and what we do is that we override a few methods, so we just use curly brackets afterwards, so instead of just creating it, we create it, but create an anonymous class, a class that we just use once, and that uh, preferably is quite simple, so it doesn't get too messy. 
And in this case, we already go through, so you can't go through it. And it also prints that out, you can't get through. And finally, we override the label, so we did that, well, we use the normal name, and then we print out out of service. And that's about it. So in the end, uh, like, like any other lecture, we have the questions and exercises document that is uploaded to the uh, um, lecture page. It should be live there now, uh, which contains questions about well, the lecture, so you can see if you've learnt it. And in this case, we have a lot of questions, more than we usually have. Eight different questions about, well, fr from everything that, from instance of to at override, we have questions about anonymous classes and so on, scopes and, and all other things. And then there's our, there are, of course, answers in the end, so you can see if you've learned, if you have realized how, how things work here. And then there are two exercises in this case where we have. Uh, uh, two different t t tasks where you can, um, well, uh, see, practice what you have learned, basically, and there are possible solutions to those. Of course, you can sol uh, solve them in many different ways, so there's no, no like, correct answer. They are just possible solutions there. And then finally, we have further explorations, uh, where you can continue further on, explore some more, as a more, uh, like a bigger, uh, exercise there without the possible solution, so that's just for you to explore further. And in this case, in this uh, lecture, well, for this lecture, it's actually about doors. So your job is to write the code for the doors that we didn't write here, so the annoying door, the breakable door, and the code door. And when you're done with that, you're also supposed to write a few more doors. Uh, well, a uh, window, a window that extends doors, so we can just jump out of it. We can't go back, so that's a one one-way door. A fingerprint door, so you can make sure that it's the correct user that tries to unlock the door. And a counting counting doorway, so it counts how many times you went past, so it can show that. So that's the the further explorations to. to for you to do and then of course you can add even more things to it so that's about it thank you for watching this has been thinking with objects lecture number three subclasses i've been vsw and i hope you enjoyed it and i hope to see you next time